In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how you can use two-point perspective to create the illusion of space and three-dimensional forms in a drawing. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to define the horizon line. Now theoretically, the horizon line is the line that divides the sky from the ground. And since this is two-point perspective, we'll place two vanishing points on the horizon line. It doesn't matter where you place them, but it's a good idea to place them far apart from each other, and they must be on the horizon line. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll define the corner. Since we'll draw some basic cubes here, we start with the corner of the cube. Then we'll draw two lines from each end of that corner to one of the vanishing points. We'll do the same with the second vanishing point. Two lines from each end of that corner back to the vanishing point. Now all we need to do is simply define the ends of the cube in space. We'll draw straight up and down vertical lines to indicate where the cube ends on both sides. Now I'm going to draw a couple extra lines here. We won't see these lines in the finished drawing, but it's important to know that they exist. And they exist from each end of the lines that we drew where the cube ends going to the opposite vanishing point. And where these lines meet in space is the back edge of the cube. But like I said, we won't see these lines because we're looking at an opaque cube that rests on the vanishing point. Now we can erase the lines that we no longer need to reveal our first three-dimensional cube in space. Now what happens if you draw a cube below the horizon line? Well, we'll start it the same way by drawing the corner and then lines from each one of the ends of that corner back to both of the vanishing points on both sides. Then, as we did before, we'll define where the cube ends in space by drawing straight up and down vertical lines. Now, we're not complete here. We need to define the top part of the cube. To do so, we'll draw a line that recedes back to the vanishing point from each of the top ends of the cube. Now, theoretically, remember there are more lines that exist. And where these lines exist on the bottom portions of the edge of the cube is the back edge of the cube. But like I said, we're drawing an opaque cube. So now we can erase the lines that we no longer need. Let's look at drawing a cube above the horizon line. Again, we'll start with a corner and then lines from each end of that corner back to both of the vanishing points on both sides. Then, just as we did before, we'll define the end of the cube by drawing straight up and down vertical lines. Since this cube is above the horizon line, we'll see the bottom portion of the cube, so we'll need to define that by using lines that go back to the vanishing point from each end of the bottom corners of the cube. Now remember, there are more lines that exist, but of course we won't see them because again, we're drawing an opaque cube, so we can erase the lines that we no longer need. Now let's look at a practical example by drawing a small little city. We'll start here again with the horizon line. Next, we'll need to place two vanishing points on the horizon line. We'll make sure to place the vanishing points far apart from each other so that we have ample space in between and no distortion occurs in the drawing. For this example, we'll just draw some basic buildings here. So basically we're going to draw cubes and add some windows and doors to them. So we'll start with a corner, and then once we've defined our corner, we'll draw two lines from each end of that corner to the vanishing point on the left, and then we'll repeat this with the vanishing point on the right. Next, we need to define where the building ends by drawing straight up and down vertical lines. Now this building is placed below the horizon line, so we'll be able to see the top portion of the building. We'll need to define the top portion of the building by drawing lines to the opposite vanishing point from each end of the corner. Now we'll add some windows, and we'll do these windows in a straight line, so we'll draw two lines back to the vanishing point on the right, on the right side of the corner. Then we'll draw vertical lines to indicate the shape of each one of the windows. Now we can erase the lines that we no longer need. Let's go ahead and add another row of windows. Again, two lines back to the vanishing point on the right. Now we'll add just a bit of shading to the windows so they look more like windows. Of course, you're free to embellish things a lot further than this. This is just a simple example. We'll do the same thing on the left side of the building by adding a series of windows. Again, two lines back to the vanishing point to determine the overall height of each window, and then vertical lines to indicate the shape of each window. Then here again, we'll add just a bit of shading to make them look a little bit more window-like. All right, let's add an entrance to the building. We'll start with a line back to the vanishing point to indicate the height of the doorway. 
and then we'll draw straight up and down vertical lines to indicate the shape of the door. And then right inside the corner, we'll draw a line back to the vanishing point on the opposite side, and then a straight up and down vertical line. We'll finish things off with a line back to the vanishing point on the right to complete the form. We'll add just a bit of shading on the inside to make it feel a bit more three-dimensional and perhaps a little bit of detail on the door. Now, of course, this is a very, very simple building, but of course you can make yours as complex as you would like. In fact, let's go ahead and add some more buildings. Now, we want to consider the bottom portion of our first building and make sure that our next corner doesn't drop below this line. Then we'll draw the corner for our next building, and then we'll just repeat the process. Lines back from each end of that corner to both of the vanishing points. Then we'll determine where the building ends by drawing vertical lines. And since this building overlaps the horizon line, we won't see the top of the building. So we can go ahead and erase the lines that we no longer need. Now, of course, this process could be repeated on the right side of our original corner as well. Again, we'll consider the bottom portion of the building and make sure that the corner that we draw for our next building doesn't drop below this line. Then we'll draw lines back to each one of the vanishing points on both sides of the original corner. Now we'll just need to define where the building ends by drawing vertical lines. This is a very straightforward process and can be used as many times as you'd like to create a series of different forms and buildings and whatever you want to put into your landscape. Now let's add a couple of roads to the scene. Very easy to do this. We'll draw two lines back to the vanishing point on the left and then we'll draw two lines back to the vanishing point on the right. Now we've created an intersection of roads basically and we'll make it look a little bit more three-dimensional by adding a curb. Again, the line for the end of the curb is just basically the corner and then lines back to each one of the vanishing points. Of course, we'll see a bit of the curb on the right side as well, so we'll extend that line going back towards the vanishing point on the left and then we'll draw a vertical line for the corner. And we'll see a bit of the curb on the left side as well. So we'll extend that line that goes back to the vanishing point on the right. And then again, a vertical line. Let's add some traffic lines in the center of the road. Again, two lines are drawn back to the vanishing point on the left. Now, the line that is drawn to indicate where each one of these dashes ends will need to go the opposite vanishing point. So it's going to the vanishing point on the right. We can then erase the lines that we no longer need to reveal our traffic dashes. All right, let's add a sidewalk. Again, very straightforward, very simple. We'll draw an extra line back to the vanishing point on the left, and then we'll draw lines to indicate breaks in the sidewalk going to the vanishing point on the right. Of course, these lines will get closer together as they go backwards in space. Now let's add a line of trees to the scene. We'll draw two lines back to the vanishing point on the left side. The top line will indicate the top of the tree and the bottom line will indicate where the trunk goes into the ground. We can use these lines as a guideline to help figure out the overall height of each tree that we draw so that they look like they do get smaller and go back in space. We'll add just a bit of texture to create the illusion of leaves and maybe we'll put a little bit of shadow underneath each tree to create the illusion of light. All right, now what happens if you wanna add a building on the right side of this road? Well, we'll start with a corner, but then you run into a problem. If you went back to the vanishing point on the right with lines, it really wouldn't make sense. So we need to use a little bit of common sense here. We know that we'll see the right side of the building, so we'll extend the line that comes from the left vanishing point on the right side of the building. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom portion of the building to define the bottom portion of the building. Now, we know that the building is opaque, so we won't be able to see any of the things that we drew behind it, so we'll go ahead and erase those lines. Now, let's add a couple windows to this building. Again, we'll do it the same way. We'll draw vertical lines where each window ends, and then we'll draw lines that go back to the vanishing point on the left. 
We'll add a little recess here in the window. For the inside bottom corner of the window, we'll go to the vanishing point on the right. Then we'll draw a vertical line to indicate the inside portion of the window, and then a line back to the vanishing point on the left for the bottom portion. Now we'll repeat this process for another window that exists on the upper portion of the building. For the visible bottom corner, we'll go to the vanishing point on the right, then a vertical line for where the inside corner ends, and then a line to the vanishing point on the left for the bottom portion of the window. We'll add a few mountains off in the distance to make the space feel a little bit more realistic. So this was a very basic, very quick, and very straightforward look at Two Point Perspective. I hope it helps you out, and I hope you're able to apply it to your own drawings. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, why not check out our comprehensive membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes great video courses, weekly live instruction, downloadable eBooks, and even lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the button in the corner to learn more now. You can also get three free course modules from our program, one from The Secrets to Drawing, one from Pastel Landscape Mastery, and a third from the Oil Painting Master Series. Each module includes a video and an ebook. To learn more about how you can get your free course modules, again, just click on the button in the corner. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get access to all of the new videos as we publish them. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in your artistic journey.